This is the Jeremiah intervention <laughs> episode. That's what. I, that's why I don't like Wait, it. What? It's because of the intervention <laughs> I, episode. I love it. I love it. That's why I'm not liking this. No, no, I love it because you know why. Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. Very special guest tonight. Please welcome for the first time, comedian, and you've seen him on Bad Friends lately, Doc Willis. What up, hey, fam? what's up, player? Hell yeah. Oh, it's about time you <laughs> Man, <laughs> you I had to fucking come. On. Yeah, I was like, I was I'm feeling kind of left out, but now I'm fucking <laughs> no, hey, no, no, this no, is Steve. I'm okay. fantastic. You're getting some good shine, finally, well-deserved. Hey man, you know you, get, you know uh, what I mean because I've I've known you when I was doing open mic at Marty's. Remember, shout out to Marty. She you still go to Marty? No, no, no. no. We're talking to the camera. Oh, we talking? Oh, no. Marty's my <laughs> bear. I'm all fucked up. Okay, <laughs> we're talking to the camera. There it is. Okay. So shout out to uh, uh, explain to them what Marty's was. Marty's is pretty much a hellhole. It's uh, not. <laughs> it's where everybody go. Like any open mic, you know. And the greatest thing about Marty's was it was. One of the open mics here in California that allowed you to be you. Mm. Like, uh, you didn't have to, like, you didn't feel like you had to perform for a talent coordinator to get past. You just was in there saying the craziest stuff. Uh, some people say some racist shit. You know, you, you just go, okay, he's working it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know how it is. But uh, it's one of those things where, like, but then it had this, this downside because it had a lot of crazy people that would come there, too. Remember that shit? Oh, they would hang out. I just remember, oh, cause, well, you forgot man. you'd have to pay him money. Yeah. So you pay Marty five dollars. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> <You know, laughs> he would ignore. He'd play the keyboard and put the headphones on. Uh, yeah. And usually the, the there was there was no audience. It was like if one of your comedian homies was there, he'd watch your set. But for the most part, you pay five bucks. When you got on, you know, remember the side panel door? Yeah, yeah. The lounge area. People would be drinking forties and just smoking blunts, yeah. or just just doing their thing, and you're basically performing in front of yourself. <laughs> it was the it was man, it, it it was like, but for some reason, you would be addicted to this place. It's the weirdest. I loved it. I yeah, loved it. I love the morning because Ralph's is right there. Ralph's, yeah. You know what I mean? They had the mama's get that little pizza. pizza. Yeah, oh slice of pizza. man, that brings a little bit of tears. I made a fool out of myself one night. Oh, Doing what? In front of Damon Wayans. Oh, cause yeah, he used to pop in there too. That's what's crazy about that mic. He, I was, I was, I was doing my thing. Damon Wayans Jr. or his father when his father? No, no, came. Damon. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. OG Damon. Damon. Yeah. Damon. My favorite Wayans. Okay. I was doing my cowboy. You know, back then, remember I did my cowboy rap? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I did my cowboy you, rap. You retired there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, my my asshole. Yeah, I was doing it, <laughs> and I just noticed, you know, I, I recognize his face. He goes to Marty, it's just him and Marty in the room watching me. It's like, and then I just my mind started spinning, and I go, fuck, and then I, and then I start sweating. And then they weren't even paying attention to me. Yeah, it's like as if I was not even there. <laughs> that's normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's but normal Damon, fucking. Damon's, people forget Damon is a heavy hitter. Like heavy, heavy. People don't. I well, really funny. If you're younger, you only probably caught his last bit of his movie career. No, right? I'm talking about comedy. He made me cry. I remember seeing him in the OR back in the day. Made me, made, made oh yeah, me cry. yeah. But I'm talking about like the people who don't know his stand up like that. Because oh, they don't his, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was more in oh, the movies and the all movies. that. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the stand up part. A lot of people didn't see. Man, Damon's man. He's one of the best, best out there, man. I, I love I mean, him of all time. In my opinion, like, he's one of the best. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, you have to group them. That whole family is just like pure Sean. talent. Like we we don't have that in my family. It's shit. Mm. 
Let's get into your trajectory, man. So, what people don't know about you, um, go ahead. You grew up like you have some street history. Yeah, yeah. I talk about it quite a bit on a few podcasts. Uh-huh. Uh, teenager out on the streets, uh, mm-hmm. hanging with hitmen and killers. You know what I'm saying? Just being a natural teenager. Just <laughs> but like hey. what, on the streets of what? what of city? Detroit. Of Detroit. Yeah, I grew up in Detroit, and uh, a lot of people. Uh, that's what's funny is like your brother is was totally clueless to like I had a gang life as a teenager and oh, he been know. a juvenile I got arrested for shootings all kind of crazy he, he stuff he doesn't man. know that he doesn't know he doesn't know that at all <laughs> no oh he he at yeah, all. yeah well yeah he don't know about that yeah yeah but yeah. you I kind of do just because I had homies who had friends that were into that right you know but they got into music and stuff instead and so I'm like okay I know that exists yeah but you so you got recruited. You got recruited, didn't you? No, no, on the no, block? no, no, no. I never wanted to. Man, that's the last thing. Most street dudes, like real street dudes, they never want to be gangsters. It just happens. Nah, yeah, it's like one of those things where like you you need money and nobody's like my my mother always said that. She said if I was around, you wouldn't never got entangled into that life because she was working full time, going to school full time, mm-hmm. and then we were we was pretty much struggling, right? And then, you know, you heard the story of my father being on crack and all that. No, no, so, no, no, I haven't. When you, you at the... No, no, no. Oh, I you don't know nothing about... No. Damn, okay, I can I wasn't them. on Bad Friends. I, you, you're on Bad Friends more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on once every two years. Hey, man. Yeah, I'm it's... happy, by the way, that they're, they're adding you to the um their cast there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's been fun, man. So you shout know. out to Andrew and my brother for, for looking out for my man here because it's yeah. about time that you got some shine. That's why I wanted you to be on here because I'm like, I got to get Doc. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate so it. So going back to your pops... But Pops, well, you know, he was a, uh, he was a street. He was uh, actually a guy. Him and my mother were high school sweethearts, captain of the basketball mm-hmm. team, and she was like, I think, captain of the cheerleading team. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They got hooked up when she was seventeen, just graduating from school. She got pregnant with my my goofy ass, and then she had me, mm-hmm. and then life spiraled a little bit out of control for her and him because he lost his job. He started messing with the streets, and she's like, you need to get yourself together. I'm out. So they separated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then they got back together when I was like 10. And then they moved me back in. And me not not knowing until later that he actually was moving in with us because she was trying to help him because he was on crack at that point. Damn. Yeah. So Was he slanging it or was he just smoking it? He was be in he was he was he was selling. So he was doing both. He he got that way. He I I believe because his his brother uh, died of pneumonia in his house. Cause it, wasn't, he was, it wasn't crack related though. That he just got nah, sick. he just was probably high because he was on heroin and crack too. Oh, so heroin, he, is heroin as well? Yeah, he was on heroin. Not my father. My father was on crack. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so he was but a little he, he didn't drink? He just smoked crack? He didn't drink? Yeah, he drank. Hey, they drink. They, you know, everybody drink. You know so what they I'm be saying? drinking beers in Detroit. Yeah, they just, that's nothing. Just drinking beers. Do they drink beer? Smoking what the fuck do you think it's? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. How they did it in Detroit? I don't you know. You think beer is just in California? I'm learning from your doctor. Where are you from, San Diego? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look up to you, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. Man, but so he was smart. And then continue, continue. So, so he moved in. Uh, things got bad to the point where, because we were doing okay. And then, like, all of a sudden, it was like gas get cut off. Uh, we were, we were, we were, uh, let me tell you how bad it was. We had to wash our clothes, wash our dishes in the same pot because the p- water pipes froze. We ain't had no water. So we used to, <laughs> we used to steal the water from next door. Wow. <laughs> I used to go over there and turn on the water. My father he used to be like, yeah, let's get some water. I know they was like, God damn, why is our bill a thousand dollars? So you guys, yeah. use, you guys utilize the water for different purposes. Yeah, Cooking, yeah, yeah. Washing. We used to save it when we used to buy jugs of water, like Damn. big gallons, and we used to have to like wash up, wash our clothes, and wash dishes out of this same big green pot, and we put it on a kerosene heater to make that for hot water, Damn. and that's how we would cook our food. And then we bought it. She got a hot plate and stuff like that. And oh, it was yeah, just I've terrible. had hot plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was terrible, man. It's so like, my mom wasn't around to like show me how to get a job as a kid. So you imagine 11, 12 years old, I had holes in my shoes. And I was like, fuck, man, and, I got to, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, kids clown, ba- gotta when they're something. that early, yeah, yeah, kids clown, right? 
Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah. They'll crack jokes shoot. on you all day. If you yeah. don't have Jordans, they'll, they'll, they'll clown on you. Yeah, right? man. Yeah. And like, I used to be like a wild, loud, fun type of kid. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, man, I was, I was seeing the, the young kids in my neighborhood. You know, you talking about 10, 12, 11. You know, they had on every pair of new Jordans, every show. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I know your mama. She ain't got that much money. What you doing? Like, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. hey, man, this is what we doing. I'm like, what? Like and then they showed me the money out their pocket because that was in the '80s when crack first started. Right at the right at when it was hot, bro. Yeah. Fuck, bro. Like you can make something, man. Let me tell you. Was like, that when the Ronald was that was the Ronald Reagan? There era? were yeah. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were on my corner alone every day at least fifteen to twenty of us doing what selling crack. That's how much money we was making. And so I'm how, telling you, how, like how within that? within an hour. I would make five hundred. So y'all, you guys would have your own block and everything, like one nah. guy at one block. Like, how does nah. that work? Yeah, it was. Man, listen, man. Like, people don't even understand how crazy booming. Like, when you watch New Jack City, how they had that one apartment building and all them people was coming in there. Oh, so just yeah, imagine yeah. that without the apartment building on the streets in one area. So that like was that, that movie was with Wesley Snipes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. was a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like. Man, like you so talking? It was, so it was, it was like that. I was making so much that I, my drug dealers was like, because I was a kid and I was like, just selling for other people at that point. Till mm -hmm. my daddy taught me how to do that. <laughs> he actually taught me how to be right, the street right, right, dude, right, right. and then also other dudes in the game. But uh, I, uh, I, I sold drugs at one point for like nine different drug dealers at once. And I was fucking up, bro. <laughs> I'm lucky to be alive. Like, one time I called a drug dealer. I was like, hey, come pick up your money right quick. Then another one showed up. And he was like, hey, you got anything for me? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just give him this because I can sell this like this. And then I give him this. And then the other guy showed up. And I'm like, fuck. And then I was like, bro, I ain't got it. And he go, what the fuck? I drove all the way fucking there. I should fucking. And I said, easy. i get you in about, give me 15 minutes. That's how fast it was moving yeah. on the, like the first and the. Uh, 15th of the month, shit. So you had a... You can buy a whole goddamn couch, I'm talking about. <laughs> <her. laughs> so you had to make do and learn, I mean, just to hustle on the streets. When did yeah, you get it? well, when how did you... this how I started off, though. Mm -hmm. I started off getting paid $50 a day watching out for the police. So they were You like, mentioned that. Yeah, I probably So did. were there noises or sounds you would make? Like no, bird I just, sounds? No, just yell out 5-0. But here's the thing, like... It was I it, it we I didn't really need to because I was like he just paying me for nothing because it was like you you could see the police before they come, and then you just boom because it was like vacant houses and fields and like where we sold dope at, you could see when they come they couldn't come through the alley except you know what I mean by the time they jump out on the alley you gone you, yeah. they rarely ever caught us you know what I'm saying it's just rugged the weather in itself is rugged in those states you know, it's gray it's cold oh yeah yeah abandoned yeah, buildings yeah, it's and houses in the winter, and shit and like that nah but you know we had spots that's what they call you ever heard uh the, what they call trap houses that's back then it was called spots. So you so have trap houses. Explain. Oh, let me. Write, I knew you should be taking notes. <laughs> what, you explain, about to open up a trap wait, house? No, 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 this no, no, guy no, 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 is he about to? No, hey, no, you better no, watch this no, guy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm about I'm to swing, bro. I'm from the cold streets of Poway, so <laughs> this this Poway kid needs to learn. Yeah, I was grew, I was raised around mostly white people in the wrestling team. So, wow. So a trap house. Wrestling team. Okay. Trap That's good. Trap houses were like um, were, they're they're the spots back then. Yeah, yeah. Is that where squatters live? Like homeless people would nah, just live hell in there? No, no, nah, you. Because there was there were squatters. Drug house. There were so squatters that live next door here. Yeah, but that's a, that's a squatting house. You are talking about this is a trap house? So it's nothing. So what's the difference between a squatting house and a trap house? A trap house is a house that's being rented out or bought cash for when you're selling drugs. Oh, so out. oh, so you're paying rent? Yeah. But then that place is Nine, for, most of the time it's a crackhead's house. <laughs> Okay. Oh, because really? his, you know the problem is uh, people see New Jack City and they just think all oh, crackheads is like pookie. It's like nah, they they regular working class people. They like mm -hmm. they able to clock in and out. It's just like my father. Nobody knew he was on crack really, mm -hmm. except us in the hood and me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So like when he when when he all they would do is they go straight to work. That's that what they think, man. I'm work all week, and then right. they come straight to you after mm -hmm. work with they check. Like, man, I got four, five hundred to spare. You like, all right, that's what I'm talking so about. So in a trap house, so p is it a, a party spot as well? People go there, drink, and just party all night, or is it used for business? Okay. No, it's it's mostly business. Well, it's you know, the, the, us as drug dudes, we we had like because you don't want to draw too much attention to a, a trap house. Trap houses is like 
you don't yeah, 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 you trick. You know, you trick with crackheads, stuff like that. You know what tricking is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, know, yeah. you got a little bit of street knowledge. I, I'm, I am no angel. <laughs> I, I kind of know some terminology. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah, he yeah. own it. He own I, it, y'all. You know, I'm yeah, walking the straight and narrow now, Doc. Okay. Yeah, hey, man. So, uh, so, so there's tricking involved as far as surrounding these crack houses, obviously. Oh yeah, because it, it comes with the lifestyle. Come right? with the lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I will give you some of them women though. You like hell no. You know. Well, explain <laughs> to the viewers. A lot of my <laughs> viewers might not be uh, familiar with this terminology. What is? Uh, explain what tricking is to the viewers. Some of what them tricking might, is might is for for street cats is is it's when a crackhead or or fiend offer sexual favors for a little bit of cash. It's not good, but that's the streets. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So as a teenage kid, you getting it? <laughs> you know, right. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> oh, Why you giving oh, no. oh, me? Why you leave me hanging, dog? I thought you were doing. I thought you were telling a story. Oh no, I got uh, you. Yeah, yeah. man. So all like, right. So we might have to edit that out, huh? The tricking part. No. Nah, to make it, what, will YouTube uh, demonetize it if we said tricking? You know what? <sighs> no, no, no. It's honest. It's not. You're That's not. Honest you're not talk. promoting it. You're no, just, I'm yeah, not. You're We're just, just talking, talking about, about tricking. Um, so it's basically prostitution for drugs, or you're right. Yep. Yep. So they're tricking to get their drugs. So it's basically they're providing a service to get their drugs. Yep. That's that's yep. honest, right? Yep. All right. I want to get into because you have a long history uh, history with being at the comedy store. Can we talk about some of this stuff? Yeah, talk about. It. Um, when did you make your move from Detroit? to um you know hollywood and how'd you get into the comedy store and all because uh, you spent mad years there paying dues go ahead doc i uh i moved here in 2000 mm -hmm. and with the idea of i wanted to because i had actually started comedy in detroit but i didn't do it what at open mics there like at a bowling alley or something like that yeah and, and it was at a place called mark ridley's comedy castle okay there there's where my first open mic occurred and then the pay regulars there when they saw me and I, I actually took a class, and they saw me, and they told me to just get up and talk on the mic, and I just had everybody laughing. Right. And they were like, do you know what you can be? You got you to gotta really go after this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but I was going through a, like, a depression because my father had killed himself and stuff like that. So I was going through all these different things in my head. Right. So when I was pursuing comedy, I was like going through a lot. Like I went and started going to church a lot. I started like, I'm going to be good. I'm going to stop smoking weed. Maybe not today, but someday I'm going to make it happen. It was like I was trying to like change everything, but it was just that weed was rough to, you know. But I, it was crazy because at the same time, I didn't like smoking weed. But I liked it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I spoke weed for about 17, 18 years. Oh, man. It was. I just, I missed the head change. Because whenever, I, I like blunts. I like rolling blunts or like, you know, it, the ritual of, you know what I mean? Rolling right. the blunt, getting the weed, breaking it up. And then I just, I just zoned out too much on it. You know what made me uh stop wanting to smoke weed? Well, well help me. Two things. Uh. <clears throat> there was these killers I got into a wit. And uh <laughs> fuck it. and so uh my boy Greg, rest in peace, Greg came to me, he was like, Hey man, he's like, when you got into it with them and you was walking down the street, one I heard one of them saying to the other guy, should I catch him in the alley and, and shoot him and shoot him? And then and the dude was like, nah, I let him go. And he said, So watch your back, man. But I was so fucked up. But that like that like stuck with me and i was like holy shit man you know what i must stop drinking because i used to drink like gin and juice and mm -hmm. get fucked up and blunts wilding out so i said man this is crazy i gotta fucking not that's it no more fucking no more fucking gin i'm gonna yeah. still smoke my weed though you know what yeah, i mean yeah. <laughs> no okay uh yeah but i was like yeah hey, man uh i gotta stop so then what made me stop smoking weed was <laughs> <laughs> Me, me on my father's side, that's what we do. Me and my cousins. We yeah. blunt up, get high. We, yeah. hey, man, fuck. We loud, bowling, yeah. movies if we good make times. it. Yeah, good times, yeah. man. There's some good shit in and that, it man. chilled you out. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, we tried to. And uh, then, so going back to the comedy club, how did you, so. Okay, we can go back um, to. Yeah, yeah. How did, you, <laughs> how did you make your transition from that club to L.A. to the comedy store? I just moved. You Just know, I got there. Yeah, like, I, I, I said, yeah, I came here for a family reunion on my cousin's side. And then I said to myself, I wanted to come out here. I always was thinking about coming out here. I said, you know, I'm going to try to find a job. 
And then I found a couple of places hiring, and Montebello Four was the one who kept calling me. Like, hey man, why don't you come? We give you forty something thousand a year. This and that. I say forty something thousand. Okay. What, what what is this? A company? Montebello Ford. What is that? Ford. It's a Ford dealership. That's oh, in Ford Montebello, dealership. California. Well, what does that have to do with co- like? I'm trying to tell oh, you. Okay, okay. Ford dealership. Yeah. Go ahead. So that's what I did. When you first came here. When I first came you here. Sold cars. No, I worked in the parts department. Okay. Because I used to work for a dealership back in Detroit gotcha, too. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so I just transferred I, that job. I did not know that. Okay, now you know. Now I do. Write that down, too. Okay. So now, I, I, I said to myself, okay, my stepdad's best friend lived in Santa Monica, him and his wife and kids. Okay. So he was like, hey, tell his daughter, why don't you take them out? Show them Sunset, show them Hollywood, but much more. But they didn't know that. I already been through all that. I yeah. just wanted to see the comedy store, and then she drove me to the comedy store. I'm like, that's a rich for the prior. Yeah. I got to get up in that, yeah. mom. You know what, what I mean? What year was this? 2000, 2000, when I first moved. 2000, okay, comedy store. So then, I'm not sure if it was the, near the end of 2000 or very beginning of 2001. I think <laughs> it was near the end or middle, like December, January, November, something like that. I went and did an open mic. Uh, on the Sundays? Yep. And so, your brother was hosting. Okay, explain to the viewers, because uh, I don't know if they still do this, explain to the listeners and viewers w- what the potluck was and what day it was and how they uh, went about choosing the acts that went up. Go ahead. So back then, they used to have open mic at the comedy store three nights a week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So how it worked is you come in the afternoon, and then they would have a lottery bucket at that time. And there would be 20 numbers and 20 blanks. So you had to draw, stick your hand in a bucket, hopefully you get a ticket, and whatever number you got, that's the number you got to go up that night. That night. So, and if Mitzi saw you, Missy Shore, which is Paulie Shore's mother, saw rest, you. Re, re, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Love you, Missy. Yeah. Uh, you would get the chance to, she, if she, she liked you, she would either make you an employee back then, which they had a, one called a non-pay regular, or they will make you a pay regular. Pay regulars get paid. Non-pay regulars were people who were ready but not ready yet to get into the paid position. So she would give them like 10 minutes in the belly room. Mm-hmm. And so employees, they would get to perform and they allowed the slots on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday after so wasn't the open it on, mic. So they had three nights? I thought there was just one night. No, it was uh, it was three. One night, man, that, that happened in like 2016. That's why I left because I was like, man, we losing our employee spots and everything. I'm oh, out. I thought I thought it was so it would just happen on Sundays. No. It so was it's Sunday, Monday, nights? and Tuesday. Okay, so you talking I, about back then though? Oh. You, you lucky if you had two, three people in the audience when we went up. It was horrible. So, so, because I remember. Okay, so it was the the raffle, right? Yep. So whoever got picked lottery style got up. Then I I realized that after that segment was friends and family or something like no, that. No, Tommy started that. Tommy did that. Yeah. So this is what it was. It was before it was like. If Missy wasn't there, the host would just throw a couple people up that they wanted to throw up. And so then it was they political, started pressing. Political. Yeah, it was political. So, but when Missy was there, they couldn't do that. So, uh, only thing when she was there, it was automatically let me see my employees and let me see my paid regulars. So, it was like that. Mitzi was like that? Yeah, so she would be like employees or she would do showcases. So she would pop in and we everybody would be men of like, phew. All right, like uh, describe uh, to the viewers and listeners what a showcase is. A showcase is just, just like anywhere else where you audition in front of the talent coordinator and if they like you, they move you forward and you in the club. And, uh, and at that time, it was Missy and I believe Duncan Trussell. Shout out to Duncan. Duncan, making it happen. Mm-hmm. Cool dude too, by um, the way. Can you can we talk a little about a little bit about when Tommy kind of came into that managerial role and how it changed the 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 landscape of the store? Go ahead. Well, when Tommy took over, was he an honest guy? Cause uh, well, now nah, Tommy was. Cause didn't he he got fired for uh, uh yeah, embezzling for some yeah, dough, right? Yeah, yeah. For but let, let's talk about before that happened. Before that happened, he had his favorites, didn't well, he? Well, here's the thing about Tommy: where he actually. Sorry. When it comes, <laughs> no, I like talking about this. No one really talks about. Yeah, it. yeah. He actually, like, was the closest thing to understanding how Missy did the lineup, but he inserted his own kind of way and style of doing it 
Mm-hmm. So you you seen what happened? It still was kind of successful, even with what he was doing. Like you Who, know Tommy? what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He he got some good talent coming through there. Because the comedy like- store. If here's the thing about the comedy store, if you're a talent coordinator at the comedy store, and you fail. You hear my stomach? <laughs> dude, yeah. that, dude, whatever I heard, dude, this is what I heard. You hold up, dude. I wanted to pretend, dog. Man, that mic better not have picked that up. But I heard, I heard. I, this, is I heard. Did God this is what damn. I heard. This is what I heard. Hold up. Pause. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's my whole we, stomach. We, we need to get this guy a slice Man. of pizza. Very, no, we, hey. we might have to cut this short. All right, but I love what you're doing, Doc. I got love for you. Let's yeah. keep going on this trajectory. I love what you're doing because this I want I want this episode to be like a historical kind of people like the inside scoop on what really happens or happened at the store. Yeah. yeah. So Tommy would have his favorites. He would uh you yeah, know. but that's just like any other. Even Missy, she had her favorites. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. nothing. You know what I mean? But it kind of clashed because. The older guys who were the favorites. Who are the who are the favorites older guys back then? Do you remember? Your brother was one. <laughs> uh, Joey. Uh, uh, Diaz. Diaz. Uh, Sebastian. All of them guys. They all were like, like, like it, it just just seeing them like just seeing Sebastian and Snowball and become this thing and mm-hmm, Caparulo mm-hmm. when he used to work the door. Whatever and see happened? These to, whatever happened to John Caparulo? He's still doing comedy. Yeah, but he ain't at the store, is he? I, I, when I left, he was coming around still, but I, I don't know if he still will go over there. Right. Yeah, you know. So how does it work, like, now? Because it's probably, they have different management there now. You haven't been in there in a minute, right? Yeah, but they sent me then, an invitation for the 50th anniversary, right. but I haven't accepted it. But like, back then, would you say, how many slots on the OR lineup, how many slots are open that on a, any given night? On the original room lineup, uh, would you say fifteen to twenty comics or less? I was no, nah, I would say about yeah, about fifteen, twelve to fifteen. Twelve to fifteen, right? Yeah, it yeah. starts at what nine fifteen. But or that's 9:30. on the regular lineup, and yeah. then well, see now y'all see a different because back then, after about twelve thirty, she had what she called fallout spots. So these were comics that didn't get a spot, and they can come and sign up. Okay, and I if they're if time spots. permitted, yeah, if time permitted. They could work out. But what happened is when Tommy took over, he started letting Don Barris take that whole slot. So it cut off the development for a lot of different So would that become the Ding Dong show or something? Yeah, that's what the Ding Dong, that whole Ding Dong part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That used to be comic after comic going up doing fallouts. So he made it into some weird. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Tommy. Oh, you're talking about Tommy. Uh, well, all of them. Like it turned into something. Well, Don weird. always was doing that. He just wasn't doing it as many days as you was as he was getting. At that point, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, 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 right. He wasn't getting it like that. Missy didn't do that. Missy was more into doing the stand-up and developing her comics at nighttime on the late-night fallout spots. Right, So right. it went from that to he was getting most of the nights, and the only fallout spots that comics ever really had was, like, I think, what, Sundays and Mondays before Damn. they took away Mondays? So it was a tough racket for uh, – because you were a door guy, right, there? Yeah. You are a door – I mean, right. what – did you witness some weird nights where it was like, because I want to maybe at least bring up the ghosts again, because I know, you know, we, we mentioned it on Scissor Bros, but. Yeah, we did. That is already. there, it, what my brother mentioned him and Johnny Sanchez um, a, a, way back in the day, they did a gig like in Riverside or somewhere, fuck, Fresno or something. They, they parked at the store, went there, and then they went to my brother's back to his truck in the parking lot of the comedy store. It was like two, three in the morning. My brother said he looked up at, you know where Mitzi's office used to be? Yeah. And he's he, my brother said he saw a guy wearing a fedora. Yeah. Who's this guy? I don't know, man. That's like the this one person is a person that a lot of people see. Whoever it is. So it's a, he has a suit on. He has a suit on. And a fedora. Gray suit, gray and a hat. fedora, whatever, yeah. or black suit, whatever it so is. So other people have seen him. Yeah, that's like the common one. I didn't see that. My you see what her my ghost is. I don't know for some reason I had like a Compton ghost or something like that. Like this dude was oh, like a have... thug and like what I saw. Well, you saw something. Yeah, hundred percent. In the main room, original room, or belly room. Belly room, because that's where most of the same sightings are. Where you said right now, where you said up in Missy Window, that's up in that office belly room area. All that. Oh, dude, you just gave me goosebumps. Yeah, you that's where all goosebumps. that should be popping off at. Most of it. Anywhere else, people say stuff. Now, I'll tell you one time. 
That a story that I didn't tell you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please do. Oh, you, oh I'm supposed to talk to the camera too when I Man, you could do I whatever never you even want. Your family out, hey. here, brother. Your family here. You could do whatever you want. You could so fart me, whatever you want to do. And Jimmy Pitt, comic that worked there. Mm-hmm. Used to work there. Funny comedian. Shout out to Jimmy. Shout Buffalo, out, do it. Shout New York. To, shout out to Jimmy. Yeah. Continue, uh, Doc. So Jimmy was scared because of all the stories. So Jimmy comes to me. He's like, man, man, Doc, can you come with me to go shut off the lights in the main room? I was like, man, you're a goddamn coward. I'm not going there. I said, man, just go shut the fucking lights. He's like, no, man. You know, man, hey, well, man. What time, be- was it? what time was it? This was probably about we shut off the lights in there and just do the OR show. So we usually shut them off right after the main room show. So it's like about 12.30, 1 o'clock, 1, 1 15, something like that. Not 12.30, about 1, 1 15. So, but this was a, not on the weekend because, you know, on the weekend when this Brian Moses, I mean, when Brian, uh, how am I forgetting my boy name? Brian. Um, the screams, yo. Why, why am I forgetting Brian's name? Um, God. He was, the, he was a white, heavier set. Guy, yeah, right? at the uh, end. I'm, Brian, I'm just forgetting. Uh, Anyway, Brian. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, it, not on that. It was just a regular one of those where they rent the room out, and then yeah. you know how they closed down a little. It was like a, kind of like a bringer room or something. Might have been whatever yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. There was it was done. Was it something Regis or uh, Ryan O'Brien? It'll uh, come now, to now, me. Just uh, yeah, yeah. yeah now, now, now I'm uh, Brian Holtzman. Holtzman. Yeah, y'all heard of that oh name? My God. Yeah. Bro, so, so, Forgive Holtzman. me, my my dog. Oh he probably like Doc. I love Brian Holtzman. Yeah, Brian Holtzman, man. That's my oh man. So, cool dude, too, man. Yeah. So, now, Jimmy goes, oh, come with me, man, please, man. I said, all right. So, I said, I'm still complaining. Like, man, you a coward walking with you like something like I'm some kind of where, 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 bodyguard. Where the, what I'm going to do? Where were the lights located in the main room? Is it They're either? in the main room where you, in the lobby where they sell the tickets. Okay, there's so a, it's not, it's not in the, behind there's the stage in the green room. It's not. No. By the cocaine no, table or no, whatever. No, no, no. <laughs> so it, it, it's it's near yeah, the... Yeah, it's a cocaine table, y'all. Yeah, yeah. They, y'all like, what well, cocaine table? Yeah, it was. It's like I've a piano story. shape, too. Just, it's cool stuff. looking, too. It's like, this is the coolest cocaine table you could well, ever... It looks... It looks <laughs> like yeah, it. it's like a mirror. It's so a mirror. So you're saying the lights are by the, the, the ticket booth uh, before you go into the room. The right. ticket booth. Gotcha. So it's like a little closet. You gotcha, go in there gotcha. and shut all lights I I, Yeah, 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 yeah. So we go through the main room and we're walking. And so... As you go, you know, when you go out to go into that lobby, mm-hmm. when you go and make a go around that little wall and wrap around. Yeah. And as we wrap around a little wall and we get ready to enter into the lobby, we hear uh, gym shoes run across the floor. <laughs> so he jumps and he screams and he says, like, Doc, you hear that shit? And he pushes me. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm pushing him back. I was like, man, somebody said, who the fuck is in there? He goes, man, man, you saw ain't nobody fucking here, man. I'm out of here. And he took off running. And I go, fuck. I go, man, get the fuck. I said, somebody playing. And I ran. I jumped over to the lobby in the main yeah, room counter. Yeah, yeah. I ran through the little hallway to go all the way back to the dressing room. I ran through there, ran through the dressing room, ran around the stage, ran, looked up the stairs, went up to the sound room. Nobody. And that's when my shit just started standing up on my neck. And I said, fuck, I'm out. <laughs> now, when, like, you said, fuck when you said gym shoes... Yeah, Was it's like, it like, like, like in a gym. Like in a basketball gym. Yeah. Like, 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 like sneakers. You're like, like sneakers, sneakers and you can hear a thud like a... And there, there's nobody else no but you two. No fucking body there. All right, I want to hear two more stories then. I love yeah, the ghost man. stories. No, man, I don't got no keep more than that. That's enough right coming, there. Dog. Shit, I'm getting the creeps. Just I thinking about that. Fuck him, show up at my crib. Uh, yeah, like, why are you no, telling no, dog? No. <laughs> you hear any, like, cr- like? have you heard any crying, like, like weird nah, sounds or nothing? No, nah, that stuff I yeah. ain't never heard, nothing like that. You haven't seen any apparitions or, like, ghosts or shadows, shadow people? I mean, the only the story I told you about the one ghost. That's it, on, on Sizzle mm-hmm. Brothers. Now, do other people, other comedians, they must have had some experiences there. What about the podcasting room downstairs? Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't remember none of those stories. Because I thought they was lying. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you they talking. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you saw it. Okay. Right. Man, I'm right. telling you, the chairs were stacked in the ceiling. Yeah, who unstacked them then? You a goddamn lie. Like, no, man. I'm, yeah, okay. It's just all of these weird stories. And then, like, and you know how everybody, like you say, cocaine table. Everybody was getting fucked up. See, right. I don't. I don't get high. I don't. I don't. I don't you either. know what I'm saying? And I don't get drunk. So mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. I was always in there, like, sober as hell. Like, okay. So when that happened to me. 
That's why I ran and called my mother. I was like, wait a minute, this ain't something's right. wrong here. I said, this ain't. And then she was like, yeah, you saw a good ghost. And I was like, oh. That's crazy. It's now, the weirdest. Man, I was creeped out by that shit for a minute. Like, right, for real? Right. Like, you know what I used to do? When I used to go in the main room uh -oh. and I would have to shut off the lights, I would go, okay, I'm in this motherfucker, man. I ain't fucking with nobody. I'm just here to, I'm going to shut these lights off. Don't, don't. Be popping up on me and no shit. I used to say shit oh, like that. Oh, you should talk to the ghost. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, if I say the man, see, probably that's all that. I need is they'd be like, you know what, this dude yeah, cool as hell. Like and then the whole too. team show up. Nah, I'll fucking die yeah, right yeah. there with him. Like, God ah, damn, now nah, I'm a ghost. Right. Um, <laughs> now, um, so as far as uh, your job description, like, did you have, was there a side hustle involved for you to make extra money? Like, like, uh, like no, like, tips on the parking lot. like tipping you or something. Yeah, tipping on the parking lot. Like, so, but you, you Here's have the thing. To do stuff like that, right? To make I some didn't extra know cash. that everybody was wasn't getting tipped like me. What do you mean by that? Meaning, like one day I made like seven fifty on tips. On tips. Yeah, yeah. It was a day where it was a cra it was so crazy, and I was like, and then when I showed Dean, and Dean was like, Doc, you know they don't nobody make money like that. So he was like, you know what? Don't tell nobody. Yeah, keep it on he the He said, down, keep it to yourself. Keep it on the low, Because, yeah. yeah, it was a few times I'll be talking to whoever Quincy ran, ran yeah, in them. Yeah, they yeah, like, yeah. man, such and such tip, such and such tip. Then they was naming all the people that don't tip. And I'm sitting over there like, God damn, that person gave me like 150 yeah, I'm just like, yeah, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, well. So how would you do it? So you would chill in the parking lot, wait for an SUV to roll up with tinted windows or something? Nah, you'd be parking. you just be parking. You don't be waiting. you just parking, you know? So you like valet. Oh. They pull in. And then it's like Jenga. You saw how small that parking mm -hmm. lot was. Tow some cars yeah. up. Matter of fact, you know who car fucked up? Who's? Uh, Michael Richards. It was the week before he had that rent at the Laugh Factory. Was he? Uh, like, he like, uh, I don't, don't yeah, want to get too controversial. Yeah, 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 when he said the N-word. Yeah, when he said the N-word on stage. Too controversial, yeah. But was he was he a cool guy like yeah was, very he, cool was tip he cool, was he cool to you very cool that's the crazy part when i when he did that i go what the fuck michael ain't like that like Yo, yeah exactly yeah Why? yeah because so, mike mike man listen let me tell you how cool he is so this is we're talking about you're michael talking about Rich, something thousand we're talking about bins. kramer yeah kramer michael uh, from kramer seinfeld. from seinfeld um yeah I tore his car up. Michael yeah, Richards, good dude, man. I can't. People don't know this, but Michael Richards was also a comedian, a stand-up comedian. You know, yeah. like he does comedy. Well, yeah, what, yeah, that's what that rent was. They know from their rent. The I know rent from the Laugh Factory. From yeah, the Laugh Factory. I've seen that. it a hundred times. Doc. I've seen that video. <laughs> yeah. I've even seen. Have you seen this? Uh, that the the on Netflix. Uh, uh, comedians in cars getting coffee. The Seinfeld yeah, yeah. series. Yeah. The one with Michael Richards. They go to Malibu. Oh, I didn't see that. No, well, they go to they, they they reflect on that night and they talk about what he had learned from that night and how much he regretted yeah. doing that. You know. And yeah. what do well, you think? Well, you what do you know think what? that is? What? Because no, you said he's not, not racist. You said he wasn't because racist. Because Mike has walked off stage in a comedy store dealing with heck hecklers. Yeah, but that's. No, you don't get it. Like, like some people, like a couple times, he's been so out, outraged with the heckler. He's like, fuck, and he just walked off stage. Yeah, but what does yeah. it have to do by saying certain words? Because certain what I'm words. trying to get you to understand is he has a, sometimes, some, some people get so frustrated that from what I've experienced from seeing him, he walks off stage. Most comics just deal with a heckler, but I've seen him just get mad and walk off. Now, I've seen that only maybe once or twice. Why didn't he do? Why didn't he do that that night at the the, the laugh because factory? Because he then? was trying to be funny. That and was he not wasn't. funny. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I don't everybody. think he was trying to be funny, though. Is what I'm no, telling I you. I don't think. Yeah, I think he was. He trying, was trying to be funny when yeah, he said that. Yeah, I think he was trying to, to. But or he was that frustrated. Either way, that word was like, man. I was like, God damn, man. The dude said it that. It came out. Yeah, it was like, man. You All right, can't. but hold up. Let me just say something. If he if he said that, I mean, saying it once is already bad enough. If you're not of that race, right? Wouldn't. Right. That's not an option for me, you know, at all, or anybody outside that race to even s even mention that word, you know. Mm -hmm. But this guy said it several times to the the dude uh, uh, up to the top balcony, whatever the, the way right. the seating is. And right. I'm like, all right. He so snapped. are you saying he just snapped? He just snapped. Well, but what I'm asking you is why he could just snap and say because, he could have said this, he could have said this, he could have been like, "Fuck you, asshole, nah, hey, asshole." People, people, he could have just man, said listen, asshole dog. without uh, bringing up race. That's all I'm saying. Listen. Could, yeah. I told you I've been in jail for shooting, right? No. When you're in the moment and you and you don't control yourself, you get dumb. 
and you do dumb things. And so that's you just that, said it. Yeah. So you're saying he got dumb. Yeah, he just went dumb. Dumb and went the wrong direction with his anger. And that, that's what I feel. Now, if he, right, 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 now right, I don't right, know right. what he do with his friends. He might throw that word around all the time. But I'm telling you from my experience, I don't know him like that. But I'm just telling you from the store, right? Like he, was when I tore, been, he was always nice to you. Yeah, when I tore his car up, that was a hundred and some thousand dollar bids. And then he'd tip you every time? Yep. Man, so so he just had an off night then is what you're saying. Yeah. Everybody, you know, everybody, nobody who 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 says he's the, like that? No one does. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're right. That's a good. That's a good yeah, point. If you like that way, you would hear. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand the psychology of why someone would even do that. But you're saying when you're in the moment, sometimes you could get dumb and just yeah, happen. you can get dumb and you, you could just dumb. release that anger and you sit back. Like I'll be. I, He's trying to think of the anger. Like I'm the last guy. I would, like I say, you know. Even though I was a kid and I was a teenager, but the street stuff I did and when I was an adult, right? I can't look at that and be like the N word, even though that's wrong. But I'm like, well, you know, I've done worse. <laughs> you know what right, right, right. It's right. just like one of those things where it's like, as long as you're not racist, dog, that's what matters. Right. But if you if you got angry in a moment and said something you wouldn't supposed to say, everybody then either call their mom a bitch or some shit. I haven't. Shit, right, right, I wouldn't no, be yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, mom? Yeah. You Latina, right? You know yeah, yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, we're just—I don't know. It was just—you know what's crazy? This is another way to look at it. It's like, like you even mentioned, you went to jail. Like one bad decision in your mm-hmm. life could just alter. You know, instead of going this way, you do one bad moment could just. Yeah. Yeah, and then right, I was listening like, to you know the guy Gilly and Wallow. Wallow, uh, black no, dudes who, no, okay, well, one of the brothers, or co- one of them is a cousin, he had there 20 years. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he said when he was locked up, he said it was a guy that was in there doing life or whatever. Uh, he said, he said, how long you in here? He said, so how long did it take? And he's like, what? He said, how long did it take? He said, what are you talking about, man? He said, what you in for? He said, Robert, he said, how long did it take? And then he said, and then he broke it down. And he was like, so that was one minute to go in, one minute to case the joint, one minute to do this. And so it all added up to five minutes. So he said, you got, he said, you traded five minutes of your life for 20 years. And I said, Phew. that's one of the greatest lessons. Uh, I was like, well, you, I mean, uh, yeah, you need crazy. to spit more knowledge that's like crazy. that. That was like, that's facts, though. You, you, see, you, hit, you hit a certain point and you, especially when you grow up around street dudes. You know, like my, I'm, I'm like my man. Let me, I'll put it to you. You know, this, my father was a murderer too. Like bodies. And what's crazy is a lot of people like think, oh, everybody get caught. I'm like, man, if you knew how many killers I know, that ain't never got time. So it's like, oh, they got away with it all the time. Cause it, you know, it, it, it depends on how you murder a lot of times. And you see it on, that's why you see like 24 and 48 where they're trying to I lo- find. I, I love, I yeah, love documentaries. Yeah, I watch all those yeah. shows. Man. Unless you, unless some clues or something be left, mm-hmm. it's, man, the police will tell you there's an archive of bodies that they just like, we have no. You, you know what videos I love watching is the interrogation videos. Hilarious. Because <laughs> what people don't realize, the, for the most part, people don't realize, you know, when they read you your rights, like you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used you against you in the court of law, right? Yeah. It's like, dude, y- you have the right to not say nothing, yet when they start opening <laughs> their mouths, man, that's when they, they're recording you, and that's yeah. when you get caught up. Yeah. The yeah. smart ones, the smart ones, they'll ask for uh, give me a Coca-Cola or something and or a cigarette, and they won't say shit. Take uh, me back to my cell. Or they ask Those are the motherfuckers lawyer. that don't get booked. No, nah, sometimes it depends on, sometimes if, well, it depends. If you already have your story and your alibi, you just tell them what you need to tell them, and then that's right. it. Right. Because that's most cases. Nah, man, I was upset. Or you have the suck. right to have an attorney. Yeah, or, hey, man, I just want my lawyer first. That's then what I'm saying. You, they don't realize yeah. that, that they have act, you, you have a right to an attorney, right? Yeah, yeah, you have a right to an yeah, attorney. But most hood dudes ain't smart enough to understand that. Like, let, let, I'll tell you. The last thing that I got arrested for, <laughs> it's another wait, wait, drop wait, 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 bomb dropper right now. Think about what you're about to no, say. I went to, I went to, I got the, no, I went to. No, no, no. I'm trouble. just saying. I'm saying. Be, before you say it, just think no, about it. I don't it. care. Bro. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten. Go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I got in trouble. The last thing I got locked up for was a attempted murder, felony firearm. Right. So wait, wait. So you said that real. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> you said that real fast, man. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah but real talk. This is the way it sounds like. Tell me, tell me, tell me, family firearm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say it real clear. It was attempt murder. Oh. 
felony firearm. Ooh. Assault with the intent to commit murder. Felony firearm. Felony firearm. Yeah, because I was, man, hot with the, yeah, you know, and I, back then I was like, you know, like, like I said, the type of dudes I grew up with, that was, and being a little dude on the streets, that's what they taught me. They's like, you can't, man, you ain't gonna be able to beat these dudes like Did that. I can picture you with like a big hand cannon, <laughs> man, like a cowboy, you, let man. Let me tell you how many guns I had <laughs> at the age 13, 14, how many I had. Can I, I had a 44. Okay, hold up. Can I write this down? You had a 44 Magnum? 44 Long Barrel. I had a, a 44 40, long barrel. I had a 44. I had a 22 that was a 44 shell casing. So I had both of those. So a 22 is the little dinky gun, right? Yeah, but it was in a 44 shell casing. So what does that mean? It I, took, I, okay. I, I don't know. I know so nothing about So it was the 44 stuff. gun, yeah. but it was filled in to shoot 22 bullets. So the chamber, everything was, yeah, it was, oh, it so was 22. so it was modified. Yeah, it was modified. <laughs> I had that. <laughs> yeah. Me. yeah well also I'm because because you know when you do that right it it, it it silenced the the, the shot Dude. a little bit <laughs> what you want me to tell you i was a kid street so you had a 44 long barrel i had a moxburg pump a or what they call a riot pump 22 to shoot what it was a 44 it shoot 22 it was bullets a, it was a 20 22 bullets oh it was a 44 magnum that shot 22 Two bullets, bullets yeah that's what you meant. It was modified to, yeah. There so you, you had a forty-four long barrel that shot twenty-two caliber bullets. Yeah. But that's one gun, right? Yeah, that's one gun. Okay, so that's just one gun. That's just one. That sounded like ten guns. No, no, right no. There. I had a forty-four also. So oh, I had oh, both. Wait, on the a uh, separate. Yeah, separate. A normal forty-four. So I had a normal long barrel forty-four that was yeah. nickel plated. Okay, nickel yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that one was actually the twenty-two was black. Doc. Then I had a 357 well, snub up, nose. Man, I'm still writing this yeah, down. write it all down. Like, write down my arsenal. Okay, <laughs> no, so no what, kids, they don't ever get involved. Don't, yeah, don't get involved. Ever. With, kids, ever. don't ever get involved right, with man. guns. This is just we're just these, we're just storytelling here. We don't we're not promoting exactly. you to get any of these firearms. I'm just yeah. doing it because I know nothing about weapons yeah. or anything. For me, it's just th this is just fascinating to me because I've known Doc just as a comedian. I, d I didn't know much of this history. Continue. So we were not promoting guns or any of no, that. No, 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 no. I'm just, just telling them. We're just telling them where I came from and exactly. how I this made it this far. Exactly. This is just to tell your story. Yeah. The third gun, though, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a 357, okay, 357 uh, snub Magnum. nose. Magnum. 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 357. No, not the Magnum. I had the snub nose. Magnum is the big barrel one. Oh, sorry. They're easy, bro. <laughs> No, no. Well, I guess it still was a Magnum too, though. But I don't right. know much about guns at all. What, yeah. What's it? What's a, what is With all hollow tips too. What's I had hollow tips on all of them. What? what? Say that again. I had hollow tips in them. On all of your guns? No, just the three fifty seven and the four four. The three fifty seven was a snub. Yeah, gun. let me finish, man. Let okay, me just run through this man, list. There's, there's three major guns. What's the fourth? I don't want. To, I had a nine got? millimeter. I'm trying to tell you. Jeez. I had a Swiss method. I had a Glock nine millimeter and a nine millimeter. This is all street guns. Okay, what's the I had a 32 what? automatic. I had a 38 special. I had a 25 automatic. I had a riot pump. Uh, that's it, I think. <sighs> so I had about seven, eight, nine guns. So wait, like hold up. You, I'm going back to the nine millimeter. You said you had a Glock version of that, and then what was the other uh, version? Yeah, I had the uh, Glock, and then I had the Smith and Wesson. Smith and Wesson. Nah, yeah. What, what's the difference between the Smith and Wesson and the Glock? They just that's just name brand. Just name no, brand. but Glock isn't a name brand. It's a particular type a of style. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But you know, it's the more lighter plastic one. That's oh. where they wear. What little Wayne say? How, how you how I shoot if it's plastic? Right. You'll see if that boy run up and then you know anyway. Right, right. right. <laughs> a snub nose is that the type of barrel or the tip of the gun? Like what is snub nose? Snub nose mean? is just a shorter barrel. Damn. How much um street? How much? As far as street value, with all these, I just saw Taxi Driver. You know that scene where Travis Bickle yeah. and gets all the guns and he meets the guy in the hotel room. Yeah, I, I know that's a movie, but like, well, that was that's how it was for the big drug guys or the guys in my gang. They meet up with guys that like have the arsenal. In Taxi Driver, that guy, the gunslinger. I ain't never seen it. Okay, but yeah. well, I'll just describe to you the scene. Okay, they bring up uh, Robert De Niro into a hotel room. This one guy with a briefcase comes out and he 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 uh he displays his whole arsenal. Like every movie. Like every <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he makes it like a special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, every like every movie. movie. <laughs> like, like every movie you've seen. Uh, okay. a, a, any gangster movie. Right, yeah. right. So is that how it is in real life? Yeah, though? that's how it is. They you just pick and you or and but actually a lot of times it's just. 
oh, we got these Glocks in. How many you want? Give us about 10, 20 or more, 40. How much, how much is a, how much? It is, depends on who you're buying them from okay, and whether how, and who how you're dealing with and how cool you How much is the 44 nickel plated one? Man, back then, was it I like, never bought any of these guns that were given to me. I never bought a gun on the streets. These were all given to you? Given to me. Yep. For free. Free. What about the bullets and everything? Free. Everything's I free. I never had to buy bullets. We They had arsenals of bullets. And they always had like, hey, man, you got to have at least two when you're out here. I want to make an announcement to these people. So there you go. See, now <laughs> you know. People think Doc's a nice guy. He, uh, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was working the door at the comedy <laughs> store. He paid major dues. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm putting this out in the universe. Give this man more stage time. You don't want to mess with this guy. He's a good guy. You, <laughs> nah, know, you know his history. You're now, hold up. Let me, this, is my, this is my podcast. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know his history. You know, he's walking the straight and narrow now. Give him the the the, the quality stage time that's needed right now for his uh, growth. Right that's what now. I'm saying, dog. Let's talk about your comedy, man. Uh, this is <coughs> fascinating to me. Again, we're not from already. We're really we're down to the last ten minutes. Now we let's start. I want to plug the positive things. Like we're getting yeah. past all this whole. <laughs> Your whole arsenal here. <laughs> we, we're gonna we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it positive oh, yeah, to your on. comedy, man. Yeah, let's do it. You know your interaction. You uh, you know connecting with your crowd and so where are you at with that? Your comedy right now. I'm still in the same position though, as far as just still trying to get myself out there because mm -hmm. that's the hardest part. Like people don't truly understand <clears throat> entertainment and how it works. It's a tough racket. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's I not, mean, people, you know, because I started doing mics again. and Look how many people they give specials and they still don't get the the, the fan base. You know what I mean? It's, oh, you're talking about like they'll throw it like a Netflix or. Yeah, a, a, bunch, a bunch of those people that has got like three, four specials can't even sell out clubs nightly, consistently. See, that I, I don't understand that at all. Because it, it has nothing to do with, like people think it's about people giving you a chance. It has nothing to do with that. What is it? Go ahead, break My it down. My mother said to me, time. That's it. It's just time. When your time comes, it'll happen. And until then, you just keep doing it. And then if it don't happen, well, you'll be dead without making it. <laughs> no, 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 but, but Doc, what? That's Doc, real shit. I think your your time has come, though. Well, we see. When no, God no, no, willing, no, no, I'm ready. No, I want to. Let's keep. I want to because I've. I because I'm looking at it from outside you. I'm in a weird space, though. You're in a good space. No, so no, let's but I'm in that weird. At the same time, when stuff is happening, I'm like, it's weird as a performer. You'd be like, I don't even feel like. I don't feel like going out and, and no, I think it might be a little bit of age. All, you know what I'm saying? All See, these the crow artists stick. are like that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't no, do sorry. That. Don't. <laughs> all these artists are like that. You have your off nights. You, you get unmotivated. Sometimes you want to hit the mic. Sometimes you don't. But my main thing is, I'm so grateful that Bad Friends accepted you as part of their family. Do you know how big of a platform that that is? I don't think you realize how big of a platform that is. <sighs> And how much shine this, this that's something that they, Here's something that they don't know and you don't know that I'll tell you. <laughs> Do you know how many people from Jeff Garland, Martin Lawrence's manager, tour manager, uh, Mike Hubbard, his boys, Larry Wack, Kenny Wack. Man, tons of, <laughs> like I have so many people. Uh, matter of fact, look at this. I think well, I still wait, might even have his number. Wait, 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 what, what I'm time talking frame? about what like, time frame? this is all now. In between now, right, like, right now, yeah, now. they all still, like, I was supposed to, right before COVID, I was supposed to open the Lit Tour, not be on it, but to open it, meaning open up and bring up Martin. It wasn't that much money, but he, they were like, hey, man, I want you to come do this. So, so I was MC it as an MC. right when the coronavirus happened, they had to cancel all the shows. But to MC? No. Martin Lawrence is the MC. Well, you're the host then. No, I'm the warm up guy for Martin Lawrence. So I go so out and. So how much time were you supposed to do? I think I'll do like. 10, 15 up front. Or then 20. you bring a Martin then Lawrence? Then I bring a Martin Lawrence. Yeah, I think that's how it was. So, but COVID happened and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So even like right before that, uh, well, not be right before that, but a few years ago, I mean, a while ago, just to show you some of the names, I think I still, have, I think I still got his name in my phone. Look at this. Yep. You see that? What'd that say? Can I say it? Yeah. He's, yeah. I'm going to say Because I'll okay, explain what happened. Okay, okay. It says, James White, screenwriter for Ray. Right. So, he's the one that wrote the screenwriter for Ray. 
Because he was working on two to three projects with That's me. I just the, never told nobody. That's the one with Jamie Foxx, right? Yeah. So he he dies of cancer right in the middle <sighs> when he was about to give me a shot. Yeah, so we were going back and forth, talking on the phone. We were setting up a meeting. We had a meeting set up, but he didn't tell nobody he had cancer. He and kept it a secret? Yeah, I guess maybe his wife knew or whatever. But right, like everybody right. else, he was just doing and just kept going. And he was like, man, I'm trying to get this going. And so he was trying to like push the projects as fast as he could. So it was like the it was like a month, like that, like a July, we were supposed to have a conference meeting with me and his ex and all of this. And then I didn't hear from him. And I was like, man, what happened? And then, like, the next month, I was like, man, I didn't hear from him. What happened? Then the next thing you know, in the L.A. Times, boom. Damn. James White dies. I'm like, what? I think it's I, just I know, is like, are I you know, kidding? I know like, where you're getting at. Yeah, it's just like, it's, it's constantly like, there. Like, yeah, people yeah, don't yeah. understand. Like, it's a bunch of people be like, man, you got this gift. And I'm, but I know, yeah. but check this out. It could go the other way, too, though. It's like being out in the, like, a surfer was waiting for waves, right? Sometimes there's no waves for a long time. Right. But then if you're out there long enough. Hey, what's that? Oh, I see one coming. I see a swell coming. And that, that could be you. And I think yeah. with bad friends, I mean, that's a lot of exposure they're giving you, man. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, it's you so know? crazy, man. Like, so, uh, I didn't think that it was like that because I've done podcasts. So, I mean, you know, I've done I from know. Joey Medias. I've done Ari Shafir. I've done all of these. But with you, you bring a magical element that I don't think you yeah. understand to that specific I thing, man. man. I'm, I'm, I've yeah, been doing this this long. I, I I <laughs> Bobby I'm and them a, don't understand I understand it. That's what's crazy to me sometimes. He, I'd be he, like, well, he yeah, doesn't he. give you, he, you know, he clowns. But here's the thing. We I, know I respect you. We both respect you. Right. I have the more of the authentic respect for you. No, no, no. He does. He has, No, no. Bobby, <laughs> man, listen, 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 listen. Yeah. Bobby no, plays in front of everybody. But when me and Bobby talks naturally, He'd be him. But the problem is See? with Bobby is that Bobby's never seen that like real raw side of me. The you know. Yeah. Uh the, so the it's stuff like that I wrote down. Yeah, so it's shocking for Bobby to hear the things that oh. he hear about me. He like, what? Like when we was in uh we did Brea and then Rick Ingram was like, Yeah, Doc, I remember that time you punched that dude in the face and Bobby's like Looking like what? <laughs> like, yeah. Like it's like, but they don't. You used know. to do that stuff. Yeah, I had to fight at the yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, little right. dude out yeah. there getting it in. You, but that's you, the thing. He's little. You think he, you can beat? You think yeah. you tough? Huh? Had a few don't mess, mimosas and think you got it? <laughs> yeah, don't mess oh, with, mess with the mic. I'm sorry. Do not mess with that. <laughs> Is the his mic still on? Okay. Yeah, it's still on. All right. So now I want I want to really start promoting uh what you got going on right now. Like if you have your Instagram first or a website. What's your Instagram doc? Doc Willis Comedy. Straight just like that. Doc, Doc Willis, Willis comedy. comedy. That's it. That's it. You got any upcoming shows? Man, I had COVID for the past month. Mm -hmm. So I got finally started getting over it. As you hear, I ain't coughing as much no more. Mm -hmm. So now I'm about to get back out there. Because I was actually supposed to, Bobby hit me up. And I think he might have wanted me to do Irvine. Because what did he do, Irvine not too long ago? I think so. Yeah, he was like, hey, and I couldn't. I was like, man, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm trying to just let it naturally see where it takes me. You ain't doing open mics anymore? I just started getting back on stage yesterday. What, what, what mics are you hitting up? Fourth Wall was the first one I did. Fourth Wall? Yeah. Where, yeah. where, where is that located? Is that like They got one in, uh, no, they got one on, uh, in North Hollywood over there by where oh, I stay gotcha, in, gotcha. in Studio Fourth City wall, and all wow. that. Wow. Then there's one on uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Okay. So there, then I do the Hollywood comedy sometimes over there on Melrose. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trap Mike with Don, uh, Dante uh, and Fu used to host. Rest in peace, mm -hmm. Fu. Love you, bro. Oh, Dante then, Chang. Yeah, Dante Chang. Oh, that, he's been on here too. Yeah. That's the homie. Shout yeah, out to Dante. Yeah, yeah. Oh, rest in peace, yeah. though. Rest in peace, Fu. Fu. Yeah. It's my dog, Fu, yeah. man. Uh, Which, I mean, I didn't even ask you about like your thoughts on what went down during that. I mean, that was a crazy. Thing that happened. Yeah, I mean, just one of those things, man. Don't mess with this is the, that's the randomness of Hollywood. You just like, the what the fuck just happened? No, fentanyl, yeah. fentanyl, like fentanyl, cocaine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah partying, you know. That's why yeah. I never. That's why I never. So kids, don't do drugs. Uh, stay away from drugs and alcohol. Do the right thing. Uh, walk the straight and narrow. And again, I can't emphasize this more enough. Don't, don't the gun talk. Don't get the guns. Don't don't get involved. Nah, with ain't guns. nothing cool. Nothing don't about get that, involved man. with the don't street stuff. Don't you ever stuff. think that's cool? Like nobody like being a street dude. Take some like, art classes. The worst. Read books. Do some uh, UFO research. 
Do, hey, yeah, I'm into the UFOs if you, yeah. you want to, yeah. Or, or sk- start skateboarding or <laughs> whatever you do. You know, take up a hobby or sport if you want to uh, start doing what Whatever what is productive do, and whatever mics, is peaceful. Okay? Um, what about, so you don't know, you're just doing mics now. Um, no future yeah. show shows yet. Not yet. Now I'm, I'm just now starting back audition. I just told all my agents. They're, they're coming. Uh, yeah, I told them, hey. If uh, if you if you're a, a entertainment person, a casting agent, whatever. I got agents. Okay, don't, I'm just saying. Don't, if don't they live. I got agents. This, do not hit me up. No, I'm just saying. I if, have agents. If they hap- be happy <laughs> to watch this, really consider hiring my buddy Doc Willis for the part. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Um, you don't have a web no website to promote nah, merch no, or nothing. No, no, no. I keep it oh, simple. Oh, what about man. Bad Friends? When are you on? Are you on? Are you uh, permanently on Bad Friends? We 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 made we supposed to do one for tomorrow, but they, you know how it, and yeah, Tino's yeah, yeah, yeah. schedule is. So they made they made not. They tour? hit me up. Isn't Santino on tour? He's supposed to be, but that's why I think. But they it's, man, you know he's so busy now. Like yeah. he's like oh, he's selling out arenas now. Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> or, or auditoriums. Yeah, he's selling out stadiums. Or amphitheaters. I mean, Sorry, uh, they're doing amphitheaters. Yeah, yeah, he's doing mm-hmm. theaters. Mm-hmm. Well, shoot, he's, we sold out when we did uh san diego oh, 1400 yeah. Oh, yeah. well he sold off what i mean oh, we, yeah. i Killing was just it. there tagging along like hey, thanks tino doc, well, let me tell you doc what up you're gonna catch them all hey man god willing thank you bro i like they your may, energy they dog. may you be on do. top of the mountain now but guess what guess who's gonna be climbing, climbing up there dude yeah, on the back yeah, end yeah, yeah doc willis look out for my main man doc willis he's gonna have a special just out. follow him he's gonna let me just do this thing He's going to have a special out in the near future, either on Hulu or Netflix or Amazon Prime. Look out for it. Purchase it. Download it. Tell a friend. Thanks again for tuning in for another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. If you want to um, support the platform, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Check out Scissor Bros, youtube.com slash Scissor Bros. Episodes drop every Friday. Friday. Uh, StevieWeebyBandCamp.com. I, I have stuff on Spotify. If you type in Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Um, I have a P.O. box. If you want to send any packages or fan mail, send your stuff to 1425 North Cherokee, at Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Um, I think that's about it, man. I love you, man. Love you too, man. You know, I've I've always been a supporter of you. Yeah, I wish man. you nothing but yeah, the best. Yeah, and yeah. I think this is your year. Well, I, mean, I told I'm, Bobby. I'm and saying I this say, right you know, now. This is Doc's year. Yeah. Watch yeah. out for Doc. Yeah, to come. Or he's gonna be coming after you with all the artillery. <laughs> 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 <laughs>